What is going on everyone? This is GC Performance here back with another video. Today we're going to be talking about the Shimano Durace uh, so, so-called 9200 Grupo. Um, this is going to be what people are saying, a wireless Grupo. If you guys have kind of been following this, uh, Shimano back in the day, not back in the day, this is February 2nd, uh, filed for some patents for some uh, wireless shifting revamps on their rear derailleur and then also to make their 12-speed uh, Grupo in the back as well. There's been a couple of these patterns out with the picture of the rear mech and also the rear cassette as well, and also for the front shifters, which I believe are here. Um, now, this all just looks like a bunch of uh, gibberish to me, but this is what I guess patterns will look like, and this is going to be how the wireless, the wireless shifting is going to go into play. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I just kind of want to talk about what this means for Shimano, what their plans would be for the trickle-down effect for the rest of their grouping. Um, speculation on what I think so like this article says that it might be like a hybrid half half wired half wireless um, but I kind of want to give my thoughts on the whole situation and what this means for SRAM I mean uh, SRAM has to do something to kind of keep up uh, with the whole situation I mean SRAM's bread and butter was being that it's wireless and if Shimano does come out with a wireless Grupo that would be a game changer for sure because I know a lot more people prefer Shimano one because it's lighter but also two um, the reason why Shimano has been wired for so long is that they don't want to lose any shifting efficiency in terms of speed and how efficient it is per each click. So uh, we'll go ahead and talk about what SRAM has to do for its uh, counterweight to get back into the game. Um, but so uh, there has been some pictures of what the SRAM, I'm sorry, the Shimano Durace has been seen on like this guy's bike right here for uh, Team Quickstep. Uh, you know, here, he's going on his bike. You can see it's like, kind of like an action shot right there. Uh, I don't know if that cassette's 11 speed, but it does look a little bit bulkier than what it is normally. He's lubing up his chain, he's going on a bike ride, and then we're going to get to shot and pump up his bike right here. And if we zoom in, enhance. Enhance. Damn it! What the hell is that? That's a big ass ad. Okay, hold on, sorry. Enhance. This rear derailleur right here, I don't know if you guys can see that. This rear derailleur right here does not look like a normal uh, Shimano Durace 9100. You can kind of see the cage is like a silverish. Kind of looks a bit longer. The back looks bulky. Um, and it definitely does, it looks like this might have like a bigger part right here to maybe house like a wireless unit. So this came out a while ago. Um, I don't know exactly when it was, but update October 9th. So this is when a, a Specialized Quick Step Rider had this on his Tarmac S7. And then they kind of zoom in, and they said even the front derailleur, this front derailleur, this housing for this thing, looks massively big compared to the new ones, or to compared to the wired ones. So, uh, and they're saying right here, you can see, if you zoom in, you can see right here on this wire, or in this photo that in the pixel, you can kind of see a wire. But being when I talked to SRAM um, at our store as well, when they were actually making their wireless shifting and, and testing in the Tour de France and giving to these pros to ride. They said that they would actually make <clears throat> fake cables and run it on their bikes to make it look like SRAM Red Mechanical. And they said that was like some of the hardest parts of, uh, of actually doing it was trying to get these on pro pelotons in actual races. And the hardest part about it was actually making them look fake to a point where uh, it would throw people all's uh, trail off there. So I don't, even if that is a wire, it could just be a fake because that does not look like a normal Durace DI2 Reader at all. That's a really long cage probably to, to house 12 speed and also like i said that's pretty big as well so um you know then then bike radar they did a speculation on if they think it's going to be a uh a half, half cable half hybrid to kind of make sure that the shifting efficiency is still there my take on that is that i think that's going to be full wireless i think the reason why it's taking so long for them to gonna uh go ahead and make this full situation is to make sure that when they go full wireless that they they set this in stone and they didn't have any hiccups and they want to keep their shifting smoothness and keep their shifting efficiency with speed uh, up to par so that's why i think they took so long to to counter up with sram um and hopefully hopefully they continue to make a the cheaper the dura di2 wired in a cheaper version hopefully they, they trickle down that and they make that more available to other consumers and i'm hoping that we see a shimano 105 either wired di2 or if they figured out how to make it a wireless version and that'll be an insane grupo to see on like a three thousand dollar bike or a twenty five hundred twenty five hundred dollar bike that'll be amazing um i'm thinking it's gonna come i don't know when that's just me speculating but they they need to get like a budget group 
that's under 5k that you can put on these bikes to make them really enticing because or even make uh Ultegra di2 more affordable and put on on cheaper bikes they're they're over here on bike radar they're also speculating them or saying that they think that it's going to be not fully wireless they have all these patents for semi-wireless and stuff like that who knows they could just be putting it out there to throw people off their tail um cranks will be alloy blah 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 we'll see yeah we'll see if durys actually comes out with a full carbon crank who knows now on to SRAM, because SRAM really only has two wireless groupos. They have the SRAM Red Axis, which is their top-line group, which I think retails for a full crank and everything. We'll go right here. SRAM Red Axis, ETAP. Full crank, power meter, everything, chain cassette. This thing retails around $4,000. Very expensive group, very premium group, but nice, uh, smooth, light. It works great. Um, you're getting a lot of trade-offs because a lot of these components are very light. And then their next closest group they have for wireless or electronic shifting is SRAM Force ETAP Axis, which I think a full group is still around 2700 bucks, which is still a premium price tag. I don't know. I mean, this group right here is where I think they need to go with, SRAM Rival. So they need something to go out there with a the 105. I've been in the bike industry for a long time. I haven't seen SRAM Rival on a road bike in forever. I think I used to see on like a Roubaix SL2 or, or a Tarmac SL2, they used to have Groupos with SRAM Rival on there. But I have not seen SRAM Rival on any kind of uh, uh, retail market bikes out there in forever. I haven't seen them have a mechanical Groupo set out there at all. They need a budget group because yes, uh, uh, you'll see the Specialized Tarmac Pro with these with this group on here, you know, a $7,000 bike, you'll see this group set on like a 5000 or $6,000 bike. That's still a very expensive high bike. And this is a great option, a wireless option group that's it's easy to run. It's easy for the, the consumer to, to charge the batteries. I mean, their, their charging situation on here with these batteries is great. Yes, it doesn't work as well or it doesn't hold as long as a charge as a Shimano because these are smaller batteries right here. But you do get two of them. So that way, if one dies, you can go ahead and put this, uh, this battery from the front rally onto the rear rally. So you get that plus. But they need to come out with a cheaper group set that's maybe subpar... $1,500, $1,800 for a full group. And I'm guessing that that's what they're going to come out with. Because, uh, I mean, it's similar to, like, like iPhone and, and Samsung. When, when one releases some big announcement, they'll come out with, like, their own thing. So if we are to see these group sets, these new group sets come out, I'm going to say that's probably going to be around, if I had to guess, around Tour de France time when all new product comes out. Um, I don't know when, but you'll probably see them, like, debuting in the Tour. When we, we'll see them on bikes, who knows? I have no idea, but SRAM needs to do something because I don't think they have anything in the pipelines to compete with the Shimano wireless stuff, which I'll be a huge header. Obviously, if I get it, I'll let you guys know, but they need to come out with something like this, like a, a SRAM a SRAM rival wireless, some kind of budget gearing, a 12-speed one, and it'll be amazing. I think they'll, they'll really kill with that. So that's my opinion on that situation. I hope it happens. I really hope, I, I really, really hope to see 105 uh, wired situation going on so but this is like all the speculations that they have on this this shimano Durace. i haven't seen or heard anything in the bike industry they keep their mouths tight and uh as they should i mean it would be crazy what the heck is that yeah they got all these different crazy patents and stuff like that but yes i am very excited to see new stuff i haven't seen anything from shimano since i had avenge vias from 2016 with this same durace on there so it's been a solid five five six years they have haven't come out with anything new so i'm hoping that they're getting this dialed in right i'm hoping that they're getting everything situated so that way when it does release they don't have to worry about any hiccups i know they do a lot of field testing make sure that this stuff works in pro pelotons close together that's one of the biggest things they said too is that they don't want to release a product where one guy is shifting and riding and the guy next to him is shifting his and controlling his bike so uh i'm sure they're doing a lot of crazy things to make sure the testing is working and i'm excited to see it so that's going to do it for this video, guys. Uh, hopefully, you guys enjoyed this. Thank you guys again so much for everything. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye.